Welcome to Hospitality. I'm Stefan Zernecki of Black Tie Tours. With me, as always, I have Cole Rogers, local artist, and Wesley Jones of Tour Cascadia. It's me. Uh, how you doing, guys? Good. Good. Yeah. Back in Friday action. Night. Friday night. Feeling good. <clears throat> Drinking some beers today. Drinking beers. Yep, it's... exactly. A little different uh, different yeah. theme today. We're going to get to our uh, top five places to get a, get a beer a little bit later on in the show. But yeah, uh, but yeah for now... Let's uh, update everybody on what's happening in the Willamette Valley in terms of COVID and all the all the loveliness that's going on with that. Yeah, well, our county's phase two. Phase two. So we're we were pretty well opened, and then we had a huge spike, and we're still phase two with a lot of restrictions at this point. So right. we're like phase one and a half. Yeah, our county is still better off than yeah. Multnomah County, right. Clackamas, and Marion. Actually, it's spreading in like rural counties right it's kind of weird <laughs> but uh but yeah we're actually doing pretty well except Newburgh itself had a little baseball team you heard about this right yeah baseball team that like practiced together did like a camp rode down to Roseburg all on a bus together for a tournament got back one kid ends up in the hospital with a fever and then all the parents like it's like fourth of July weekend and yeah. all these kids go out go to parties yeah they they go everywhere and they uh, spread it all around town. Yeah, and it was wild. I had to get tested. You had I to get tested. tested. I don't know if I was connected. Yeah, I mean it's amazing how quickly that like exponential growth like right. you 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 saw it happen. Yeah. in Newburgh up up close and personal this week. Right. Yeah, and um yeah pretty nerve wracking. Like I didn't want it. I didn't want to be locked up for no. two weeks or more or more. Yeah, no. until you're um, totally done with it. But uh, but we're open. We're still We're open. open. We're doing it. Our cases have gone up. Our hospitalizations are still pretty low. Right. And well, think, and testing yeah. has gone up massive amounts. Just from like the per, uh, healthcare perspective, we were testing like 75 to 100 people at the max <clears throat> four weeks ago. And we're probably, there's like seven, 600 people a day showing up to get tested. And we're able to test about three to 350 of them. So numbers going up is partially because testing is insane right now. People are coming to get tested. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. Percentage Gotta, of positive tests is going up right. too. So that's, you know, but, yeah. um, but like it's, it's hitting home now. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. Yeah. More than before. Right. Um, but again, Oregon is open. Like we have, we're more restricted on people being indoors, having celebrations. Mm-hmm. And basically the governor is like, don't be inside with a bunch of people. Right. Like, and that's, you know, yeah. pretty much the deal. So they're like, oh, restaurants and bars and, and stuff. It's not really being transmitted there. Right. So, and, and so many of the wineries have outdoor seating. Yeah. And a lot of the restaurants have outdoor seating too. So, feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, still from a keep hospitality your standpoint, it's, yeah. we're doing an all right job given the situation we're in. When it dies in, in, like immediately in sunlight. So, outside seating is a great place to eat, <clears throat> drink. So go drink naked. Not wear a mask. Like, you yeah. should feel very, pretty good. Not necessarily, not breaking social distancing guidelines, but not being worried about getting anything outside. Yeah, stay away from people. But like, if you're outside, like you can mostly relax if you're not, yeah. as long as you're not, yeah, in somebody's face. Like that's the thing they said. Like when you have alcohol, people get really close. And, and real friendly. And real friendly, and they're talking. Yeah, they, and right. you, you can talk for hours. Oh, right. Really. Like, and they're that it is transmitted that way. But, but that's right. you know that's not really what's going on. That's right. you know, you're going to a winery for an hour. You're outside. You're spread around from everybody, and then you're going to another winery or whatever. Right. So. Yeah. What's it been like driving? Have Have you made many adjustments within? Oh yeah, vehicles. Well, yeah, I mean, we're just riding the big, the big, the vans, yeah. the big van and the smaller van, and people have been pretty good about wearing masks. Mm-hmm some slacking and if i see like the mask go down below the nose or some people forget i'll just go and put down the windows and yeah. either they remember and put it back on or i just roll with the you know with the windows down right. and it's like you know whatever yeah but i mean i feel for people like you know especially the women when getting their lipstick and makeup all messed up and they want to take their instagram pictures yeah and the, you know the mask is all you know screwing everything up but right um yeah, no, it hasn't been hasn't been too bad. Yeah. A lot of planning though. Hmm. But so. People have to go out and live. They got to go do things. I mean, if you have to wear a mask, so what? But like, right. 
What are you gonna sit inside? It's gonna be. This yeah. is gonna be here for eighteen months. That's the, that's the. That's the number that we're getting in hospital, so it's not changing. And so, yep. either go do something and be just learn to be okay with right. the world being a little more dangerous than it was before. I think, yeah. and not being ignorant to it, and not coughing on somebody or t- telling people it's not real, but just just acknowledging that it's out there, and it's okay to go out of your house. You yeah, know? Like, life goes on. We have L- to life's gonna to go on. Right we just right. have to be fucking adults and yes. and adjust a little bit. Yeah, and if we can all be adults, we're all gonna have some fun. <laughs> yeah, right. Being an adult, Stefan. Uh, yeah, I, I know a lot of people that are. Yeah, the age of an adult. Age is but, not. Uh, yeah, it's true. Adulthood is not an age, is it? Yeah, it's maturity. Maybe. Adulthood's but. between your ears. Um. So yeah, the beat goes on in in Oregon uh, yeah. in a couple different ways. Of course, we're still open, but then also uh, we've had some weird weather. Oh and, yeah, a lot um, of rain. Talked to we had a lot of rain and cooler, just a cooler mm-hmm. spring and early summer. Really, right. really over the last week is when it's been um the, the temperature's gone up a little bit and i talked to um one wine grower and uh, actually winemaker and he's looking at his vineyards being picked like second week of october yep that's kind of what he's looking at first yeah. week of october maybe Very talked late. to another guy and he said late september or something right. like that so in uh, compared to our recent hot vintages that's august late yeah, that's early late. September. Yeah, we've been having those picks. August picks and, so, right. and early September picks. Yeah. Right. Are you seeing the same things? I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing between the last week in September, first week in October, um, which is exciting. I'm ready for another traditionally, like, semi cool Oregon harvest. Right. Like, Long even if it's hang. even if it's hot between now and then, just getting that extra hang time to get the secondary and. Yeah. Tertiary characteristics, like get a little bit more of that funk, yeah. more developed acids. Let it hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it hang. Um, but it's also, I mean, we say that we're also not, you know, winery owners and vineyard owners that are, you know, that's that's the thing is like right. those those guys who are growing the grapes and making the wine, those warm vintages are kind of the easy vintages because it ripens. They, they know they're going right. to be picking in sunshine. Yeah. You, you yeah, know. you're not up against potentially like October being super wet. Yeah. and leaving fruit on the vine because you, you can count the the, the, the rain's going to turn on mid-october yeah yeah sometimes earlier right. and that's where people that's where you end up getting caught. when it gets dangerous too when you get rain kind of like what we've been seeing now thankfully we're early we've done some organic sprays across you know the board we're able to keep botrytis and powdery mildew out because the clusters haven't sealed yet right yeah. they're still small there's a lot of airflow but you get close to harvest and if it rains and then you get a 70, 80 degree day, yeah. like that bacterial presence is inside those clusters and the sun comes out and it turns well, into it's, a it's petri dish. The longer harvest is, or the longer the growing season is, so later harvests, the more potential there is for any sort of mold. Right. And then you also have a sh- much shorter window of when to pick. Because like in those years we've had recently, it's been, you know, we have like, People just pick when they want to because their bricks are high enough that they could maybe push it a little bit further. But they have a much, yeah. much wider window to use crews and whatnot. And in those October type picking seasons, it might be one weekend that every single vineyard wants to pick within yep. the AVA. Yep. And they have to, sh- you know, there's only so many crews to pick. Yep. It's tough on so the it's small gonna be, guys. It'll be a tough year for, yeah, for the smaller wineries. Yeah. As it was already going to be a tough year on right. the smaller wineries for all this crazy COVID stuff. I learned something this week about botrytis. Tell me about it. And that um, spraying, the only, like, the farmer I was talking to is that, like, for botrytis, the only way to combat it is early. Mm. And it and it has less to do with the clusters um, closing up and growing, but that you actually have to spray, those specific sprays, I guess, have to be sprayed during flowering. Mm. Oh, okay. Because you actually have to get that compound or whatever it is inside the grape. Before mm. the cluster Because b- apparently... I didn't know this. Botrytis mm. happens within the grape. Mm. It's not like mold or mildew. That's something outside External. happening to it. And mm. uh, so, so like actually spraying those mm. early kind of like either seals your fate. Or, or you're rolling the dice. Or you're, yeah, exactly. For, for botrytis specifically. Yeah, right. Mm. I was like, oh God, I love this. Wow. Love learning this shit. Yeah. Like, it's fascinating. We'll have to do a whole episode on just like disease pressure. Top five disease Oh, pressures. yeah. Who are we going to get on? Uh-huh. Beefland Jackson would be good yeah. for that. There's lots of people with just tons of experience. Oh, yeah. Someone smarter than us. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's, have a, ooh, There's a few people that Better yet, it. panel discussion, and they can fight it out. Oh, yeah. And I'm here Dick for Ken it. Wright and Even Robert if it's just Jackson and his dad. Time. Yeah. Jackson and his dad can just fight it oh, out. Oh, yeah. Anyone that'll fight. Yeah. Bring that's them a, that's, that's going to be the... That's the goal for getting multiple guests. Right. Who's going to disagree the most. And yeah. Oh. Be most entertaining. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to take a little break. And when we come back, we will be discussing our uh, top five places to grab a beer. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Haas Brutality. And uh, this next segment is going to be our uh, top five. Top five places to grab a beer. Now, this is not... Um, this is a specific top five list. This is top five places that... I would recommend to wine country visitors, people who are visiting yeah. the the Willamette Valley primarily for wine, but they also maybe like beer. It's not necessarily like dive bars and stuff like that. So we're gonna we'll we'll talk about that later. But top five places um, to to grab a beer, and I added on there cider because I can't drink beer. You're not a beer guy. I'm not a beer guy. Uh, I was a beer guy until uh, freshman the- year of high school. And eighth, eighth grade was rough really, yeah. on you. <laughs> no, yeah. Fre- freshman year of high school, I had a six pack of tall Budweisers and ended up literally puking in the gutter. And after that, beer. You had, you had to come to Jesus. None of us has ever it. puked from alcohol, so we all understand. <laughs> yeah. We all understand. You know, maybe it's, it's what uh, with something it's about. It's been six weeks since yeah. my last puke. Um, and I was done. I was done. <laughs> I remember going to a party after the next party I went to, and it was like a Miller Lite or something. And I'm like, Oh, is it just this beard? I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, I'm, I'm not into this. And then mm-hmm. nothing I tasted after that till now, other than like a sour or so. And even sours don't taste like good to me. Whereas before I enjoyed beer. So cider, I enjoy cider. And of course, check back with us. In wine. I like whiskey. You know, I'm happy to try different beers, but, but good luck. I'm not going to try your COVID beers, but, um, but yeah, anyway, so, so my list, my top five list is the, our places that have beer, of course, but then, I know for a fact that they have cider, and or I've I've had cider there, and I like it. So, uh, my top five number the first one on there. This is not in any order. Ruddick Wood uh, in Newburgh. They mm-hmm. have a uh, nice little. Uh, they always have something on tap, and I usually like it. I don't like the crazy dry ciders, and I don't like the super sweet ciders. I like some. Are you more of a cider guy than a sour guy? Uh, what does that mean? Do you cider. like ciders more than sours? Like sour beers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't like sour beers, but I'll, oh. it's like the closest thing to a beer. It's like a beer Dude, that I actually can choke so down. so confusing. You gotta eat, drink some sour. I know. I sour love sour stuff. Much. I love sour stuff, like you right. know, warheads. And Check back with us in a year, and Stefan's going to be a Well, I am happy sour to be beer educated. Fanatic. This, is, this is fine. Uh, so Ruddick Wood, I usually always have, find something there I like. Good, yeah. um, McMinimins, they, <laughs> they usually have, like, yeah. I, I think they've had some of their own ciders, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, but uh, rooftop bar. So McMinnimans. I love the bar. I'm saying McMinnimans in McMinnville rooftop bar. Granted, it's like one of the nicest settings to have a drink in the valley if it's not too fucking hot. Um, but even then, they got like umbrellas and shit. So it's no, it's an awesome place to sit and have a beer. I agree. Right. I agree. Yep. Or a cider. Or a sack. Yeah, if you're a, Thank- a bitch. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, man. Um, I, I drink whiskey though. That 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 hey. that, that kind of adds to the, the. That's way more. Yeah, I agree. Okay, yeah. I agree. Agree. Balances you back out. Uh, Red Hills Market. Red Hills Market could be on many many lists. I know they serve cider, so yep. uh, most of the time they have cider. Their beer that. list is hit and miss. Yeah, and not usually many choices like on tap or whatever. I think it's ten, and a lot of times they have like four of really the same many? distributor. Oh, it rotates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah some days are great. Some days are yeah. disappointing. But they're good for me. And actually, they have like a handful of cock- like a few cocktails they do too, which, yeah. I, which I like. A damn good Bloody Mary. Yes, there you go. Bloody Mary is one of the, the best. Bacon yep. yep. Um, Golden Valley, another one in McMinnville. They typically have a cider. Um, and I just like I like Golden Valley. It's kind of like a everybody can find something they like at Golden Valley food wise too. But um, and me, uh, my wife loves their beer. Megan, your mm-hmm. sister loves Golden Valley. They've got a bunch. In case of you forgot, Megan's your sister. Megan, that that wife, <laughs> that, that guy. wife. Thank God I was wondering who he was talking about. Yeah. Um, and what? Oh, Social Goods. Social Goods in Newbury has like a huge selection. Yeah. That place has been had ups and downs as far as like <clears throat> what is it? Like what is Social Goods? 
but they've kind of settled in a little bit to like a tap house. Yeah. And you can get growlers. I've ordered like kegs of kombucha, kegs of cider there and stuff like that. And yeah. Yeah. You know, they, so they got a nice little choice of both stuff on tap and then also stuff in like cans and bottles. Yeah. So. Yeah. Bam. Those are my five. I agree. I, the, I went back. We, we got these drinks at Social Goods. And I hadn't been in there for a long time. And I love the new layout they have. And the vibe is way different. Like you were saying, you didn't know what you were in before. It was kind of yeah. like, is this It's uh, like a grocery store. Yeah. It's like a restaurant. It's is it a like a market play place? Is it, yeah, yeah. It, it was sort of like almost wanting to be Red Hell's Market, it seemed like, but a different version. And now it's actually got its own yeah. Yeah. vibe. Well, they it's put really in those cool. killer uh, garage doors in the front. Yes. So now yeah. the whole thing, That's especially now, it's like an addition. indoor, outdoor yeah. Yeah. Need that. facility, yeah. right? Yeah. During, yeah. During and during COVID, COVID, yeah, totally. But it's great. It's an awesome uh, spot. My top five, um, Barley and Vine, which is in downtown Newburgh. Mm-hmm. Really nice place. They always have a bigger tap list, um, just a decent amount of ciders. They have good wines in the bottle, and um, I like their beers. I mean, they always have like 15, 20 beers that, that are yeah. like good IPAs. They have some good lagers. I just like their They selection. always have the full like spread from mm-hmm. stouts to blondes to ciders. I mean, yeah. everything. Snacks, some of the and best snacks. And if you're snacks. into D&D, they've got an incredible D&D table in the back. Yes, the game room, actually. There's a whole game room in the back, which I'm not into gaming. Stefan just got a hard dick. No, yeah. I don't, I'm not into oh. it. I just know my 16-year-old who's helping <laughs> but with But Magic, Magic, D&D, yeah. and other games that are like Five that. Years. Um, drink. Yeah, it's going to be... It's, it's, when when Aiden's 21, cool when oh, Aiden's 21, will, he's yeah, going to love it. In the back, yeah. But yeah, so Barley Vine's really cool. Really cool. The Bitter Monk in downtown McMinnville... Great, bre- great beers, little brewery. Uh, Allegory is also in McMinnville. Hmm. Mac kind of kicks our ass with the beer scene. Yeah. Um, I like Allegory's beers a lot. Really good sour beers, and they have good IPAs. Peter Allen, their beers are amazing. And um, 1882, which is also in McMinnville, another rooftop place. And I'm honestly picking this because the bar... Where the to setting. Drink. It's not like they make amazing beers or anything like that, but they always have good beers on tap, good local stuff. They have good food, and I like sitting outside at a rooftop drinking beer. Right. It's yeah. fucking good. Especially after yeah. I've been drinking wine all day. Yeah. Like, I'm down to always open another bottle, but at the end of the day, I kind of want to refresh, and so beer is my go-to. Exactly. Um, mine, my number one, hands down, is Wolves and People. So it's a farmhouse brewery. Over it's by cool. the Allison. It's um, an awesome place. They're, they're actually on a little bit of property. Um, they've got some fun new... I don't think it's been announced yet, but they got some fun new things coming, so stay tuned. Um, I want the scoop. <clears throat> Scoopity off, doop. Off camera. Okay. Y'all gotta wait. Awesome. Um, but, man, just a fantastic place. Incredible beers. Cool people. Um, you're sitting outside in an old like hazelnut orchard. Yeah, it's, it's the a best. Good, it's a sweet vibe there. Uh, Allegory and McMinnville. Um, they always have a food truck, which is really cool. A food truck and a ton of outdoor seating. Dude, um, food trucks are stupid. They're yeah. the worst. <laughs> it's a terrible investment. Yeah. <laughs> terrible, terrible if you want to work way. 90 hours a week and yeah. barely pay your rent. <laughs> Douchebags opening food trucks. Um, barley and Vine. Um, I was a bartender there for two years. That's actually how I ended up with a food truck. I met my chef. Um... And then Carlton and Coast is a little tap house in Carlton. Yeah. Carlton would, doesn't have a whole lot for... Carlton's pretty small. Right. And but cute. They, yeah, it's cute. It's Great very wine. cute. Um, but if you want a beer... And you're if you want a beer, golf, they have 38 taps. Yeah. 38. Which is more than anyone else in the yeah. valley. Pretty That's positive. a shit ton. <clears throat> well, and it's great, too, especially if you're going you're going to have lunch. Go to, like, the horseradish. Yeah. Stop over, get a beer, yeah. and then go back to wine tasting. Yeah. Cleanse your palate, if you will. There you go. Um... Bitter Monk, number five in McMinnville. Uh, their challenge right now is they don't have a ton of outdoor seating, yeah. and it's a little like indoor. Have they shut down Third Street yet? It's ha- I think it's. I don't think it's happened yet, has it? It's supposed to be happening. A third well, we should we should know this before. We should know. So this. Third Street's capping off at both ends, and they're doing outdoor seating, the European the style, the, the whole, whole Third Street. street. Yep. Yeah. Um, that'd be, that'll so, be good for Bitter Monk. Yeah, I mean they have a killer tap list. It's run yeah. by the folks that run Allegory. Yeah, at this exactly. point, and they just yeah. like they've. They're doing it right, so we yeah. we got to work alongside them at the um, on Thursdays last year. McMinnville had a big music festival, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. would do a different band, 
and they were they were there every week. That's yeah, where pretty, really I well. first went to Allegory. Uh, my buddy Aaron Williams, who ran the, who was helped run the uh, Linfield Wine Program for a while, he worked at Allegory, and they had like an awesome event. Right. And yeah, they had a food truck out there. I think they had two food trucks, a band. Yeah. They have that large kind of outdoor seating area yeah. and parking space. Yep. Yeah. It's a very fun place. So to go. those are cool places. Mm-hmm. They're they're pretty pretty hip. You know, you you can bring your cool friends. You can to take them a date everything. to those places. You can take a date. Yeah, yeah right. whatever. But now I want to discuss what I call the lumpies effect. Sure. And for those of you that don't know, lumpies <gasps> is a straight up dive bar. Yeah. In downtown Dundee, yeah. and I swear, ninety percent of the tours that I drive past Lumpy's mention it because it's called Lumpy's Lumpy's landing. And it looks like a dive bar and they always have the best sign outside and they've, yeah, they've always got yeah. some quippy little, a little sign. Yeah, yeah. Something. And, um, and people are like, Oh, we need to go to Lumpy's. It's, you know, it's ironic. It's like the Nike people. Yeah. You, you've had Nike people. who I almost had a van stolen. There. Yeah. At, at Lumpy's. That was touch and go. I had a group that came out and I was supposed to take them back to the Allison and they knew we were doing two trips. This is when I worked for you, I think. I think it was, um, and I, you didn't tell me till after, I think. Yeah. After um, and so I went to get the first group, and they bum rushed the van, put all 24 people into the van. And they're drunk. I always leave the van running. That's always my thing. But for some reason, this time I took the key out, put it in my pocket. And they came out, everyone got in, they shut the door, locked it, and somebody jumped up into the driver's seat and tried to put it into drive. The I'm standing effect. outside of him like, hey. People act like idiots. They the take, they, they, so Lumpy, so I mean, people. People want to have kind of a, a they want to get wild. Yeah, they want a grimier experience where they can kind of sit back. And, yeah. and cut loose. They want to do have... Jaeger bombs like they did in college. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess they have something called a pink pussy. It's a shot that looks like Pepto Bismol, something like only at Lumpy's. Oh. Anyway, oh. but <laughs> so, so now I mean, there's some other places around that kind of fit that bill. Right. If you just really want, like some of them have, you know, so there are places around that have, you know, flat screens and you can watch a mm-hmm. game and stuff. So. You guys know better than I do. Well, there's a ton of places, too. Like, if you have a rental and you're staying in the valley and you want to go back to your place, there's a couple places that deliver. They'll deliver beer, too. Oddmo's is one. Right. Really good pizza. Ton of toppings. They'll deliver a six-pack. Um, gosh, I mean, even, like, Round Table does yeah, something just similar. Pizza. Just go yeah. get pizza. Get a beer. Abby's, a and Abby's Pizza, downtown yep. Newburgh. Yep. If you're drunk or you're just having a good time. <laughs> I want to get more drunk. You want to go sit? Of course, again, COVID changed everything. But they have this awesome... It's this brick building, and it's a cool, it's a cool pizza joint. They're not going to be like amazing beers or anything like that, but it's. Um, when it's a spot it's too, fun. like in the like fall, that. when you're done with your wine tour and you want to go watch a college football game or yeah, totally. an NFL game on the su- on Sunday, like Perfect that's place. a place to go get great pizza. No, yeah. Wait, does Abby's have P- TVs? Abby's yeah. TVs. Yeah. they do. Okay, they're, I know. Like they're not like big flat screen TVs though. Don't anything. expect to go watch like a pay per view fight at Abby's, but. <laughs> It's just a it's a laid back pizza joint yeah. that makes really good pizza. Go get some wings, get right. some get some pizza. And yeah, they'll, they'll have the game on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's Newberg. Do you guys know of any like uh, I don't know the McMindle spots for that? They don't. Not to, I mean, third, I mean third the Cabana is pretty nice. Third Street Pizza. Third Street Pizza's pizza's got go, some decent beer. If you want to go? <laughs> don't do it. If you want to go and head home with <laughs> basically anybody at the bar, go to the Cabana. Because the cabana is... That's a look of a man who knows from experience. Well, I've gone. And I've gone many times, actually. Um, wow. Cabana is... <laughs> I'm telling your mother. Well, I've, I didn't say I went home with anybody, but <laughs> me and my entire football team would go to cabana after games just to watch. It was like the first street pub of McMinnville. Yeah. Um, You're guaranteed someone's going to get in a fight so, like f- every 45 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Every, and he probably has a top knot and like a shaved like back of his head. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. No, cabana's... It's a hip spot if you're in Mac. Just saying. Well known. Yeah. Don't do it. So we've got the whole the whole experience, the beer tastings, right. and the beer flights, all the way yeah. to the cabana. All the way to the meth. Getting fights. <laughs> meth and... capital of McMinnville, basically. Don't do that. Yeah. Well. All right. got to take a little break. We'll be back in a few minutes to wrap things up. All right. And welcome back to Hoss Brutality. We're filming today above Chapters Books and Coffee and uh, Cream Northwest, and I got some ice cream. So you're just gonna what have to do that. What flavor did you get? A little dirty mint Ooh. and uh, chocolate milk and cookies with real mint leaves in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, whoa. Cream's ice cream is <laughs> really fucking good. You guys should come try it. <laughs> if yeah. you're in the Newburgh area, it's worth a drive. I'm gonna be eating this. You guys are gonna have to kind of 
yeah. take lead for the rest of this. Well, we're gonna go. We're gonna talk about what's brutal and what's beautiful lately. So there was an awesome story. Well, it's kind of a sad story. It started out as <clears throat> turned out to be awesome, um, and it was about a weddings that were gonna be planned for uh, in the valley that got canceled because of COVID. And Wesley knows kind of the yeah. details about that. He well, des- destination that. weddings are a big deal. Like mm-hmm. wineries make a ton of money off of hosting destination wineries or weddings at wineries. Um, and so there was a story that came out, KGW, this was put out June 30th. So not that long ago, a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple that was supposed to get married at uh, Youngberg Hill in McMinnville. Um, a local winery. <laughs> Sorry. A local, a, a, a a local, local winery. Local winery. <laughs> um, but they, the couple had put down a $14,000 deposit and then were told they were going to have to move their date to next year. And it was going to cost them another 8500 Right. So, uh, like, to be fair, I don't know if that 8500 was expected. You know, if it was like you put down a portion of the deposit and you pay the rest. They were going to have to move their wedding. Um, and three other wineries stepped up. They heard the cry for help. Uh, Bryn Mawr, Domaine de Broy, and Stoller. Mm-hmm. So there were a number of different couples, though. Yeah. So. I'm, this this is just the one case that I'm referencing because yeah, I sure. knew the deposit numbers. Uh, but, I mean, a handful. This is the example that we're yeah. using for right. what happened for a bunch of different couples, though. Right. So um, Domaine de Broy offered no no fee. Uh, Bryn Mawr, the same thing. Stoller um, offered to let... So Stoller just purchased the Evergreen Aviation property, um, and there's a log cabin chapel, which is actually where I got married. And that's turned it's, out pretty well wow. so far. Yeah, no, it's a. I mean, it's a stunning like log cabin, and there's these oh, giant there. windows. I watched George yeah, Peterson talk there. You're, oh, good. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> um, I love him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> the waste of your afternoon. Um, <laughs> one of the best speeches I've ever heard. Jesus, we'll deal with this after we get off air. Um, Speaking of brutal and beautiful, the, uh, <laughs> I'm the editor. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so so it's kind of this turnaround. They, you know, were able to relocate, do their wedding, smaller size, um, but didn't have to fork out another ten grand. Yeah. To get married with a handful of their close family and friends. Yeah. It's an. It's a really awesome story, honestly. But it's also like. On the brutal side, like you're right, I I get like getting a deposit and not being able to perform, like. But yeah. in in the hospitality world, if you get a deposit and something happens, you pay the deposit back. You don't. Yeah, it's hard fucking to fucking target hard to, somebody's money because of a pandemic. Right, and I and I like you're saying we don't know the details, and, and there could be a ton of fine print into what they were saying as far as the eighty sure. five hundred that they were asking for additionally from the fourteen thousand they'd already invested. But yeah, I think that. This is a time where a lot of people are going to take a hit, and like depending on how you want to take a hit, uh, is going to affect your business, you know? right? And so, not to trash Young Killer or anything like that, but it, uh, as it looked to the public, it wasn't a good look, right? And as it looked to the public, what these other wineries did looked really, really good, and so <clears throat> definitely notable for what happened in the valley. Yeah, I take this with a bit of a grain of salt. Sure, I know. The folks who own Youngberg Hill, I know they're, you know, seems like my interactions with them, good people and everything. Right. And I got a little bit of a stink on it as far as a thing the media maybe uh, ran with. Just ran with a little bit like, sure. ooh, this sounds juicy. This winery right. screwing over these young couples right. and everything. Like, Here's some clickbait. It's so easy to be not responsible and not get the full story. And Youngberg Hill, they they released a statement or two, or a statement or so, and you you read it and you kind of go, oh well, that that kind of makes sense. So if like, I'm I'm kind of trying to take it with a grain of salt. Right. I've I worked at a school where some crazy shit went down, and the media just reported it badly, like badly. All they did was they took the word of these stupid ass parents. Sure. And the school it made the school district look horrible. Right. And so ever since then I'm like. Mm. But like, there's two sides to this story, and I don't feel like this is. You yeah, know. you also have to understand though that like everything you do as a business is going to be viewed from your business perspective yeah. and public That's what I was say. speculation. Like, yeah. if you're going to make that initial before you have that call with the couple saying we're not giving you your deposit, we can move you to next year, and 
the remaining fee or an excess fee is still going to be charged. Like, yeah. you got to understand that, you know, as a tour driver or as a food truck oh. owner, like, this sucks. We're all taking hits. But also, this is the time not to capitalize and make money. This is the time to, like, take care of yeah. people. Yeah, yeah the, the, the concern should not necessarily be on the bottom line in, in a time like this, unfortunately. Right. Unless that's the only thing you can do as a business and you literally are, are unable to survive because of the bottom line. But yeah, I agree with you, Stefan. I just think that in, a, in the day and age that intention doesn't really matter, unfortunately, because so. <clears throat> when the media gets something, they're going to take off with it. Sure, this is the perfect kind of thing, especially when everything's down and no one has anything to talk about. This is a great story because people love trashing other, you know, people, yeah. the media loves trashing businesses and telling stories of these other businesses to save the day. Unfortunately, that how it looked, that's how it looked for Youngberg Hill. But again, we don't want to we don't want to just throw them under the bus. But we just have to note it that like this is what happened, and this is this how the public happened. perceived right. it, mm-hmm. and that's reality. Yeah, the public know? perception is brutal. The public perception mm-hmm. is it the truth. Sucks. Whether or not it's fair, that's what the reality is. So you know, it that's, sucks for that's you. I don't have the time or energy to go track them down and get the <laughs> right. whole story. But that's what's right. circulating. This is not real journalism. Right. That's and what's this circulating is our journalism. World. We're right. not reporting the news. We're just talking about what we heard in the what news we hear, what and what we fucking yeah. think about it, which means don't take our word for it, basically. All right, so that's uh, <laughs> that's something brutal, brutal something beautiful. Uh, the Wine Valley Winery uh, Association barrel auction canceled in the spring, and actually that whole event, that whole week was an awesome week for us. Made a ton of money. Canceled. Yep. So nothing. The ba- nothing. The barrel auction's back online, whatever. Like, okay, cool. And the pro, but the proceeds are going towards uh, a James Beard Foundation program called Open for Good Industry Fund. Right. And basically, the idea, like, this money is going to go directly towards restaurants. Right. And because the restaurant industry is getting it hard. Man, right watching now. watching the chefs on, like, I follow a lot of chefs on Instagram and Twitter, and the number of people, like, seeing really? Chang closing three or four Momofukus and his offshoot. Like, those are the kinds of chefs you think would be insulated yeah. at this the point. The Michelin like, three-star restaurants are like how, and then and then that then you start looking at all of our community. Like, yeah. I'm in it, and and yeah. you're watching. Like, most of these folks are keeping their doors open, but mm-hmm. like when business closes and we're sitting down and having a beer, like, the fear and just sadness of laying off folks that you're. Like you're running a small pirate ship and you really care about your fellow pirates, right? Yeah. Like, and so if you have to let a line cook go or a dishwasher, like sometimes a dishwasher might be a piece of shit and you've been looking for a reason to get rid of them. But for the most part, like sometimes these are, these are people that like <laughs> you're showing up. <laughs> Just saying, come on, bro. Yeah. Who's the uh, dishwasher? Right. But like That's watching that these guy. guys close and yeah. being threatened with closing. And if everything shuts down again, if we don't fucking wear masks and just, Make sure we keep our numbers low. Yeah. So many of these small businesses are done. Like, done. Yeah, we don't. Not we're, not, we're not going to last another closure. Yeah, whether now. you like it or not, and whether you believe it or not, doing what the government says you should do is the only possible way that these businesses are going to stay open. And they, you can go out without a mask on. Unfortunately. Yeah. So. So, good. Good on them. I like that. Yeah. Kinda yeah. Going cool. going directly. Yeah. It's like God. Ah, yeah. Because I really feel for these businesses. Right. Yeah. Sucks. <clears throat> brutal cool so in may um <clears throat> i think kgw did a story that we that we had uh talked about which was there was an enormous hit in the Oregon wine industry in sales so wine growers they call them but wine wineries lost 75 percent or almost 75 percent of their tasting room sales in may and 45 percent of wholesale um which is crazy for one month compared to the average, not even compared to right. just last year. Um, but it's an indicator of either the rest of the summer or the fact that people are super scared to go out and do anything, right? Obviously. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough year. And, and considering like 50% of wineries in general are in the black or in the, in the red, in the red, yeah. um, that's going to be probably – the writing on the wall is that they're probably a lot of those places are going to not be able to make it. Right. Yeah. Well, because you wait <clears throat> so long to be profitable, yeah. and right. then you finally get to a point where you're making at least enough to keep the lights on. Yeah. Like breaking even. And and something like this happens, like there is no national market 
restaurants aren't buying. I mean, maybe wine shops, but yeah, their distribution accounts are just in links it's, to the it's wholesale. It's done. <laughs> well, and a, and a yeah. huge and another huge part of that that I that I missed was um, the federal government bailed out, not bailed out, but they they backed a bunch of different agricultural products essentially with some massive bill, and the wine winemakers were not a part of that, so they got no relief from this COVID right. bill yep. that a lot of places did get relief yep. from. So, no PP, PPP for the. Uh, they were now white, no what wineries could get PPP, just not the the agriculture the, the bill. bill. They're two different thing. things. Okay. The PPP okay. just covered the, like payroll and a little bit of your lease, but okay. nothing from like farming, farming costs, costs and yeah. loss and rumor. You know. I and you can't even rumors are that the PPP though is gonna for loans under one hundred fifty thousand might end up be just automatic grants. That's what hmm. some people are pushing for. That's because it's, well, the, the I'm gonna reapply for my PPP yeah. then. Yeah, there you go. Get it. Get you some Jeez. and go to Cabo. <laughs> no, right. You didn't. You didn't right. hear that here. Yeah. Right. No, Jesus no, no, no. Christ, Stefan. Oh, we'll edit that out. I'm not editing that out. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah. then uh, beautiful Sokol Blosters box one. Yeah, I, you haven't had it, but it, I no. know they've they've done. It's their Evolution cool. Pinot Noir and their number nine white wine. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, it's. I know it's number nine, yep. but it's something, something like number that, nine yeah. white wine. The Anyways, nine. I mean, it's awesome. to. Uh, it it's a good winery right? making a boxed wine. Like, people love boxed wine. They don't want to admit it. Boxed wine is awesome. It, you know, if it's a certain need. If you have a ton of people and you're, say, having a bachelorette party, you could get a box of wine from Sokol Blosser, one white, one red. You're good for the day. And it's not or, shit. It's not shit. Or, Those right. wines are decent. Right. Those or if you're like, like a stay-at-home really parent solid. or now people are working from home. Like, yeah. There, I can kill a bottle I mean, of wine pretty sexist, easily, but, but like, if you're what? like, if you just had a box in your, like, you want a glass, you don't yeah. want to open a whole yeah. bottle, you want, you know, and it'll last you. I mean, I don't know. Do you have you ever bought a bottle of uh, boxed wine before? I did in college. Okay, well, yeah. I've never have, but to make some sangria, here I am talking about it. But no, I've never it's bought a boxed cool. wine. But I, I think the idea of it's really cool, which is that yeah, people buy crappy boxed wine anyways, so why not make a good boxed wine? Right. Exactly. Well, if it's a need, like, and I think that's one of the things that we talk about off camera a lot is that there's a certain prestige within the wine industry that makes the barrier to entry super high. And there's a, like, there's a lot of folks that just want to enjoy decent quality wine, but maybe, you know, maybe it's new to them or this is just what they grew up with getting box wine. They had, their mom had Merlot in the refrigerator all the, you know, like, so for those folks, if there's a need, elevate the the quality right yeah it's a good thing and good on Soko Blosser like yeah. not being above yeah that. be flexible I mean like the canned wine thing obviously is, is picking up so uh-huh. why not right. why not a little box wine I yeah. mean if it's shit maybe we should taste it and then we can just we should rag well, on it I like, but, uh, I like the concept I mean I, I love the concept yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly I think it's cool Cole what you got for us this week story time with Cole <laughs> yeah this is a story about what's a how would I summarize this? A tale. Telling the truth, I guess. <laughs> That's always <laughs> That'd dangerous. That'd be the lesson. So I start, I worked at the local uh, hotel for two years. And a year and a half, actually. The local hotel. The Allison Inn and Spa. The nice hotel. It's the only nice hotel in, Oregon, in, in Newburgh. So. Newburgh, yeah. <laughs> so I worked there as a bellman and as, as a valet. But when I interviewed there, I had known that the bartender made pretty good money because I had, I had known him personally for the, uh, when I got hired. So I told the person in the interview, oh, yeah, I'm a bartender, too. And they're like, okay, you have experience bartending? I'm like, yeah, I've bartended events. Like, I've bartended a bunch of, you know, a bunch of different events. I've never actually had a formal bartending job, but, like, I'm, I'm a trained bartender. Steve? Did you interview with Steve? <laughs> I didn't initially interview with Steve. I, I interviewed with the HR lady. I can't remember her name. Hated her, but <laughs> whatever. I'm sure she's sorry. a very nice person. Sorry, dear, I, was okay. I was a young man, though, so I didn't, I didn't really like her. Anyways, so I told her that I was a bartender. <clears throat> Anyways, fast forward a year when I had been working there for a long time. Holly, who was the, the manager of the restaurant, comes running over, and we were about, I was about to go home from my shift at like 4.30. And she's like, Cole, I'm so glad you're working today. I need a bartender for this huge wedding we have tonight. And I'm like, 
perfect, you know? I don't want to say it, but I do. You just doubled down on... Of course I do. Uh, yeah. You know exactly who I am. So I'm like, not only am I saying perfect, but I'm like talking like I'm pumped about it. I haven't bartended for a long time. This is going to be a good time. I might be a little rusty. Oh, That's no. what exactly what I was trying to imply. And then she's like, okay, well, I'll get your outfit. So she, they get me a bartending uniform and... Speedo. Long story short, yeah. I end up at my own bar at the back of this wedding on the deck in the back. <clears throat> and I'm totally by myself, so I can't be like watching how people make drinks. I have no idea how anything is made. <laughs> and they just had sent me out back and said, go set your bar up however you normally set your bar up. And like, we'll send people out once the dance starts. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> so This feels like a bad dream. It was like a bad dream. It does. And, it, and <laughs> as this it moment, real people, this moment right? I'm about to describe happened, I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be really funny someday in my life. But right now, this is not funny at all. Because the <laughs> DJ, he says, just so you all know, there's another bar out back. And there's no one at the bar. And so the back door is open to this, like, on this huge patio in the back of the Allison. And, like, 25, 30 people all walk out at once just to get in line. And I'm like, I got lemon drops. I got Jack and Cokes. I'm, like, yelling out, like, I know how to make all these things. I have no idea how to make anything. And luckily, 90% of the drinks were simple. Jack and Coke, you know, gin and tonic or whatever. But at the end of that first rush, I'm making some drink that I act like I don't remember how to make and I'm asking the lady like how she likes it but I have no idea even what the ingredients are everyone like, yeah, like, and so yeah. Yeah, do you like bag? sugar rim on that or no sugar rim like, Aperol spritzer or so then uh, I hear her husband lean over and just go this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing <laughs> <laughs> and I just like looked up and like nodded to him and then just kept making her drink and handed it to him but yeah so the whole night was like that like three hours of just trying to make drinks pretending like I'm a bartender and then, yeah, got done, and Holly, how, how, Holly pretty well knew I definitely wasn't a bartender how, at that how point. How were your tips that night? They were pretty good, you know? I think people felt really sorry for me, probably, honestly. But, yeah, it was really – it was not funny at all. It was petrifying in the moment. But, yeah, it was funny after. So, kids, tell the truth. That's in a, the in an interview, story. yeah, don't act like you can do more than you do because yeah, somebody's going to end up asking you to do that thing, and you're going to be – doing it <laughs> completely uneducated Good about Lord. it lord yeah wow. all right that's uh, gonna do it for tonight thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you again soon adios